Canoness before turning on her heel and striding swiftly for the priest's orbital transfer ship. Having planned many days of worship and ceremony to mark the appointment, the gathered priests were aghast. Only a handful had the presence of mind to hasten in her wake. In the months after her arrival upon Holy Terror, Val soon proved herself a dreaded opponent to those who sought to control her. She continued to wear full battle armour when receiving senior members of the Holy Synod, intimidating and unnerving them with her pitiless stare and brusque responses. Val threw herself into re-establishing personal contact with as many orders as possible, firmly deflecting any priests who tried to assure her that matters were already in hand. She sought to satisfy the orders that the Abbess Sanctorum once more stood as their commander, absorbing data on their current crusades, demanding field reports and strategic dispositions, and ascertaining what they were doing to throw back the flood of impious savagery that boiled out of the Great Rift. It can be expected that Val, young as she was and propelled so suddenly to the rarefied heights of power, must have wrestled with questions of faith and self-confidence. Yet whatever struggles took place behind the doors of her mind remained private. Not once did the new Abbess Sanctorum allow even a crack to show in the armour of her faith. It did become clear, however, that Val chafed at the reins of what she saw as personal inaction when so many other sisters of battle were fighting and dying. Even when, upon the recommendation of Robut Gilliman, Val was elevated to the status of High Lord of Terror, it did little to cool her ardour for battle. Few within the Adeptus Sororitas were surprised when the Abbess declared herself the commander of the Ecclesiarch's Crusade against the traitorous trade worlds of the Philosopher's Belt. Since then, she has taken to the field in person dozens of times during her short tenure, leading forces of every order majoris. Not given to rousing sermons and uplifting oratory, Abbess Val instead leads by example on the battlefield, letting her deeds in service to the God-Emperor speak for her. Numerous senior sisters from several orders' dialogues and famulus compliment Val's command staff, deftly dealing with the slew of generals, planetary governors, admirals, and more that daily clamour for her attention. Morven Val does not see herself as the Emperor's chosen, but as an instrument of defence who must place herself between the imperial creed and the countless horrors that seek to defile it. Her sense of duty to this lofty position means she will never recklessly submit herself to an unwinnable war. Martyrdom, as her former order taught, is a release from one's duty, and not its ultimate expression. As all her predecessors understood, the position of Abbess Sanctorum is a burden that can be set aside only when the last heretic, mutant, xenos and demon is expunged from existence. Only then might she step back into anonymity as a sister of her order. 